Welcome, welcome, and welcome back to another edition, live edition of the Now International Bible Radio Show, The Bomb of Gilead. I am your host, Brother Julius. My co-host, Brother Will, is on the road because he's a truck driver. We ask the Lord to give him traveling blessings. I want to thank everybody for uh, supporting us uh, as we played the replays and the rebroadcast over the last two weeks. We've been working on trying to bring a better product to your sisters and brothers. So now uh, we are able to uh, broadcast and stream on StreamYard uh, via uh, Facebook and YouTube. And tonight, and I just want to thank all of our Bomb and Gilead fans, all of our top fans, and all of our newcomers. If it's your first time here on the show, welcome. Get your pen, your paper, and your Bible, and uh, study with us, sisters and brothers, because you're going to learn some things and you're going to understand some things that you probably never heard of or never understood. Tonight, one of my favorite guys in the Israel of God, one of my favorite teachers in the Israel of God, brother, all the way from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, my brother in the faith, my uh, my friend, brother James Anderson. Welcome, brother. Welcome back. Thank you, Brother Julius, and uh, I want to say a good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all the viewers, and thank them for tuning in and supporting this ministry, and uh, and a thanks to you, my brother, and the rest of the uh, Bomb of Gilead uh, producers and staff and crew uh, for allowing me to come on and uh, partake in feeding the Lord's sheep, you know? Praise the Lord, brother. Praise, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Uh, um. I, I want to send a special shout out to Brother Odad, who worked diligently to 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 test and run test and 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 get our equipment up and running. I want to thank him for that, sisters and brothers, as well as uh, Sister Maja and Brother Andre Doke, the Dokes, Sister Debbie, and my daughter for the beautiful background, and for the Sister Debbie for the promotions, and um, just thank the Israel of God for uh, allowing us to do this, and the God of Israel. Because that's what this is about. Healing medicine for a sick and dying world. Brother James, talk to us about your lesson title tonight. Well, tonight's lesson is titled The Master Physician. The Master Physician. And uh, the reason I was moved to do this lesson, Brother Jews, is because as we look around the landscape, we see people uh, dying from this COVID-19 thing. And we see people uh, getting sick and dying from just life itself and the other things that uh, that we have to deal with as far as viruses, illnesses, injuries, or what have you. But yes. we want the people to know that you should put your faith in the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because he has the last say-so on your situation, okay? And he yes, tells sir. you multiple times, don't put your faith in man, don't trust in princes, okay? But... Also, we're going to show the audience tonight, brother, that 
not only can he heal you physically, he can give you that more important spiritual healing. He's the doctor of that too. And so you get salvation when you get that spiritual healing. So we're going to look at both sides of the coin tonight. And all of it is wrapped around a person's faith in God. Because if, uh, 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 if you don't believe in him, um, then you're going to fall short. Okay. So Amen. the faith has to be there for the physical healing and that spiritual healing. But I, we just want y'all to know that he's in control of all of it. I praise the Lord, brother, in Jesus' name. Yes, uh, brother, Dan, I want to acknowledge the people from Japan, the United Kingdom, Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, 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 I mean, just all over the world who tune in to the bomb of Gilead. I want to welcome brother, uh, Pastor uh, Johnson from Fort Lauderdale, from Bethel House of God, Fort Lauderdale. I want to acknowledge him as well as Brother Melvin from Come On In My Room and all of uh, the other programs who are tuned in to the Bomb of Gilead. And uh, I tell you, uh, we missed you guys over the last two weeks and we couldn't wait to get back, but we wanted to bring you the best product and we can always do better. We want to thank you for uh, tuning in. Brother Kaleem Hill from Atlanta for restreaming. And, and just thank everybody. I want to. Uh, I we got we, we we still have to do our thing, James. Big yeah. by Isaiah sixty first chapter, and then we will get right into this. Isaiah sixty one. Pastor Johnson said greetings. Baker's man White um, is Isaiah Israel is tuning in, and sisters and brothers, chat with us. You can now chat with us and put your comments in the in the chat room. And you can, and we can respond to that. Any, any questions for uh, the teacher? Uh, we can respond to that, sisters and brothers. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. 1, 2, and 3. It reads, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the blind of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, as always, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. We thank the Lord in Jesus' name for that scripture and for all of you sisters and brothers who are tuned in tonight on this episode of the Bomb of Gilead Bible Radio Show. Come on, yes, James. Let's go. Where do you want to start this at? We're going to start it in Deuteronomy 32 because, you know, we love to get that foundation established right out of the gate. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39, Brother Julius, 32 and 39. And as we go, sisters and brothers, as we always say, like, share, and post. And watch and we watch, sisters and brothers, and start your watch parties. The bomb of Gilead is back. How you doing, brother Isa? And we are live. Deuteronomy 32 and 39, my brother. Yes, sir. It reads, see now. That Wait a minute. I'll Hold on. Right out the gate, Julius. See yeah. when? See he when? Said, he says, see now. See right now, brothers and sisters, right now. Go ahead and read. That I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Mm -hmm. I kill and I make yes. alive. Mm -hmm. I move and I heal. Neither there any that can deliver out of my hand. So right away, sisters and brothers, we see that the Lord said there is not anyone that can deliver you out of his hand. So you are definitely in his hands. And let's go over to Mark chapter 7, Brother Julia, because if he want to heal you, he can do that. Nobody's going to stop him. If he yeah. want to kill you, he's going to do that. Nobody can stop him from doing that. So at the end of the day, he has the last say-so on your situation every time, okay? And not only that, Brother James, not mm -hmm. only that, uh, he said he's going to have his way. And when he has his way, it is justified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, because Daniel said, hey, the Lord is righteous in all his works, okay? In chapter 9, Daniel said that, so whether he's busting your head or if he's saving you, he's righteous in whatever it is he's doing, okay? Amen. 
Mark chapter 7, brother Julius, let's pick it up at the 31st verse, 7 and 31. Go ahead and read it. And again, departed from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. Uh-huh. And they bring him unto one that was deaf and had an impediment uh, impediment in his speech. Mm -hmm. And they teach him to put his hand upon him. Now, see, uh, we got that map right there where you can see where the Mediterranean coast is over to the left side of that picture, Tyre and Sidon. So Jesus come down to Galilee, right? And Decapolis is that area out to the bottom right of the Sea of Galilee. But you can go uh, into uh, Matthew, the eighth chapter, and see Jesus moving around, doing all these healings, casting out devils, healing fevers, pausing all that. And the thing about those people, they asked him to leave after he did all of that. That's how they came. Yes, sir. From the looks of that map, look yes. like he did a lot of walking and he, he covered did. a lot of territory. Yes, sir. He did. He did. So look. Let's uh, we have verse 31, brother Julius. Verse 32, we have we, we just got done with verse 32, bro. Okay, so we see this guy was deaf and he had a speech impediment. Okay, right. we'll go ahead and read 33. And he mm -hmm. took him aside from the multitude and mm -hmm. put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. Okay, and looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephata, mm -hmm. that is, be opened. Yes. Man, you, you know what? I, I got to say this. Go ahead. We don't need to speak Hebrew. Nope. We just read it. And the interpretation thereof. Mm -hmm. So when he said Ipata, that's Hebrew. And because that was his language. And it just said, it just means be open. Mm -hmm. so that's why, Jane, we don't need to uh, learn Hebrew. I speak Hebrew, but I speak that which is written. That's good enough for me. But on top of that, brother Juju, it, it isn't written anywhere that we got to speak Hebrew. That is That's right. The bottom line. Can't read it. 35. And Go ahead. Plain, his ears were open and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain. So right away, brothers and sisters, we see that Jesus was a speech language pathologist and he was a otolaryngologist. That's the ear, nose, and throat. They specialize on uh, 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 problems with your hearing and stuff like that as well. So we see that Jesus fixed a man's hearing, and that same man, he made that man able to speak. Okay, hey, man. I like so, the way you, I like the way you pronounce them big words, brother. Hey, it it takes some time. <laughs> okay, but uh, but right out the gate, we see that Jesus is showing you he can heal. But at the end of this lesson, our main point is to show you that on top of all that physical healing, he can yeah. give you that spiritual healing, okay? That is right, bro. That so is. now, let's go to Numbers 12, brother. Oh, let me see. No, no, no. Let's keep reading, brother Jews. Continue reading. 36. And mm -hmm. he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And we're beyond measure astonished saying he had done all things well. He make it both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And that's why we went there because he makes the 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 dumb to hear. Yes. I mean the dumb to speak and the deaf to hear. He yes. can do that, okay? So now, let's go to Numbers 12 because we don't have to go to 1 Corinthians 10, brothers and sisters. But if you don't know this, you can go to 1 Corinthians 10 and read the first four verses and you will see that that God of the Old Testament that was dealing with Moses and Israel was none other than Christ Jesus himself as God, okay, before he came in the flesh. But we're going to go to Numbers 12 and show you something that the God of Israel did back there. Numbers 12, Brother Julius. Let's yes, pick sir. it up at that first verse. Numbers 12 and 1, my brother. Go ahead and, and read it. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Okay. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Okay, so skip down to verse 9 and continue. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Mm -hmm. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. 
And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Okay, so right away, the Lord was displeased with Miriam and Aaron. He dropped his leprosy on Miriam. But the reason we went here, I want you to pay attention to something. Let's go to verse 13 and see what Moses said. Go ahead and read it. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Wait a minute, Brother Julius. Moses said, Heal her when? He said, heal her now, brother. Because he know that God can do that if he wants to. If it's in his will, he can do that. So, Moses, so that's what Moses asked for because Moses know he's more than capable. That's light work for him to heal her right now. Okay? So, Jay, now this, yes, sir. So if the Lord can inflict some punishment or some disease or some dis-ease upon you, he can remove it just as quick. Yes, sir, he sure can. According to his will and his power. Well, the book says he's omnipotent, Brother Julius, in Revelation 19. So that tells you his power has no limit on it. None. Okay? Amen. So, and Moses knows that. That's why he spoke like that. But let's see what the Lord said, Brother Julius. Go ahead and read it. Man. Oh, wow. And, and the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, she should not be ashamed seven days. Uh huh. Let her be shut up from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. So the Lord told Moses right then, she got to suffer this seven days, brother. She got to get seven days of this. So he was telling Moses when he was going to take it off of her. Okay? Take two aspirin and come back in seven days. And yes, also, sir. In other words, <laughs> do, a, do a talk too much. Uh, 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 a mouth check and then come back to me after you done repent it in seven days look and that that's a mini version of calling the end from the beginning the lord the, when the lord put it on her he told moses in seven days that's when she can come back to the camp okay and you know that it was off of her because if she was if she was still leprous after seven days she's unclean and she can't come back in the camp but that let's read that last verse brother brother Jude 15 and miriam was shut out from the camp seven days and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. So it was just like the Lord called it. Seven days. Seven okay. days. So he was operating in like uh, the primary care physician, if you will. He, he took it off of her in seven days, okay? So now, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, Brother Julius, because... I mean, because it's just like when uh, in Isaiah the third eight chapter in Second Kings, when 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 the man of God came to Hezekiah, Hezekiah yeah. went to the Lord. Yeah, and the Lord stopped the prophet, the man of God, before he even got across the courtway and said, "Go back and tell him I just added fifteen more years to him." Okay, oh, I, man. Every time I read that, man, it just mm -hmm. do something to me. Every time. How you doing, Virginia? Uh, every time I read that, James. I mean, he. I mean, who can stop him? Nobody. There is none that can deliver you out of his hands. Nobody. Mm -hmm. So now, let's go Genesis 2, my brother, and let's pick it up at verse 18. Let's look at another something that the Lord can do. 2 and 18, brother Julius, go ahead and read it. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will make him and help me for him. Yes, sir. Skip down to 21 and continue. Wow. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. You know, they call, you know what they call that deep sleep right now, Brother Julius? Sir. Anesthesia. anesthesia. Yes, sir. They call that anesthesia, okay? So the Lord was operating like an anesthesiologist, okay? Precision. With precision. Yes, sir. So now let's see what he did once he put the brother to sleep. Go ahead and read it. Again, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took uh -huh. one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And so, now he performed, so now he performed the surgery on the brother after he put that anesthesia on him, okay? Brother, it this ain't got to do. No, sir. This is the master physician, brother. He can do it all. There's nothing he cannot do. And we're going to read that. But go ahead and read, brother. What verse was that? We had 22. Go ahead and read. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Uh huh. 
And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. By that master physician, that master surgeon, the Christ, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So now let's go look at something else he can do. Matthew chapter one, my brother. Matthew one. Sisters and let's and go to verse 18. Yes, sir. Sisters and brothers, just in case y'all didn't know, the first man was taken from the ground. Every other man came and female came out of the woman from yes. that day to this day, James. Yes. Oh, oh yes, I love sir. that law. I love this Bible. I love I love his word because it is just the power and the word of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say, my brother. Now, now, here, now, this what we're about to read right now, brother Julius. You got certain people out there that kick against this right here. <laughs> but let's but let's go show it to them. Go ahead and read one and eighteen, Matthew one and eighteen. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she mm -hmm. was a child of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and read. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Mm -hmm. but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take her to thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. See, we all know this story. The, she got pregnant before she was with her husband, okay? And so you have people saying that uh, there's no way they could have done that. But, but, but Julius, I did my research on this. There's 80,000 attempts worldwide every year to do an artificial insemination. Wow. And, and a high percentage of them are successful. So what a, what a person is telling you by saying there's no such thing as a virgin getting pregnant, having a baby, they're telling you that man can do something that God can't do. They're saying that all these people all over the planet can do this, but the Lord God, omnipotent one, can't do this? Brother James, where do you think they got the, uh, the conception from? What do you think they got the concept of artificial insemination? They had to get it from somewhere. Of course they did. Somebody peeked so, into this Bible. Right. And, and they'll say there, and they say there's no such thing as it. But right here, we see that the Lord was operating then as a fertility doctor. You see what I'm saying, Brother Julius? So, so he can take care of that. And we're gonna look at that some more. But we see here that uh what verse did you stop at? Verse 20, brother Julius. We stopped at verse 20, brother. Go ahead and read. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Go ahead. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, mm -hmm. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth the son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. He took her until it did. But now read that next verse, brother. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Let me tell you something. We just read that verse. The verse said he didn't know her until after she brought forth that child. So wow. if the book say that, we believe this book, then that's what it is. Okay? Just like Adam knew Eve. Yes. Man. Just like that. So the Lord, I'm showing you that the Lord have the power to give a child to a woman if he want to do it uh, by, by the same way he did it with Mary. He has the power to do that. So now, but let's go to Genesis 30 and put a cap on that. Genesis 30, and we pick it up at that first verse. Genesis 30 and verse 1. And see, uh, a lot of these people today, they don't understand that when you uh, have the uh, capability to have a child, that's a gift from the Lord. It is. It is a gift from the Lord, brother. And you it can't is. throw that away. And you cannot abuse that gift either. And the other part about that, James, if he closed that woman's womb, there's nothing or no kind of sign that can open it. 
Nope. And that's the truth. So now, Genesis 31, go ahead and read it, brother. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, mm -hmm. Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. So now pay attention to Jacob's response to Rachel. What did he say, brother? And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. Mm -hmm. And he said, am I in God's stead who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? So Jacob let her know, hey, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do to get you pregnant, okay? Right. He said, hey, but, but the right. Lord, the Lord is the one that's keeping this child from you. But let's go prove it. Skip down to verse 30, my brother, and continue. Go ahead and read it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, I'm sorry, good. not 30. Verse 22, Julie. 22. What did it say? It says, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Yes. Woo! Man. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So once again, we see that the Lord is in control of that. He's in control of hearing. He's in control of speaking, vision, okay? He can take disease off you. As we read in Deuteronomy, he can kill you too, okay? And, he, and James, he is in yes. control of birth control. Yes, sir. Wow. So now, but 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 you're right. So now let's go read it. Let's go Matthew 4, my brother. Matthew chapter 4 and pick it up at verse 23. Matthew 4 and 23. Because welcome, the, the welcome Bruce Griffin. Uh we got Bruce Griffin in the house. I believe he uh are you are you Bruce? Are you from Buffalo Sisters and Brothers? As you comment, let us know where you're from so we can acknowledge you. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, 4 and 23. Go ahead and read it. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Do you see that, Brother Julius? I see it, brother. It said he healed all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. Okay. So what, what about cancer, James? What about those who have cancer? Whatever type of cancer. They need to go to the Lord God of Israel about that. They need to do everything they can do here. They need to do everything that they're capable of doing here, but they still have to go to the Lord about that, brother. And I talked to one of the elder brothers last week who had been in the hospital, and now he's back home, and he sounded better in that conversation that I had with him last week than he had over the past year or so that I, you know, each time I spoke with him. So, but he was happy. He was praising God for giving him that healing because we know that prayers get answered and we know that the Lord is still in the blessing business and we know that he will hear you and he will heal you if it's in his will, okay? But you have to lean on him and believe that he can do that, okay? Sister but we don't need that too, huh? Sister Hadassah Israel, James says, it's been so many times, but we were walking around River around river uh, slipped and someone grabbed me as I was going under until this no family member knows who it is, who it was because no one else was with us. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, I would never leave you nor forsake you, Sister Hadassah. I know that's right. Man, Cheryl Hepburn said, the Lord healed my troubled mind so I can have peace in my affliction. Yes. Yes. He can do that. He's capable. It's easy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, hold that testimony right there. We're going to bring that back up, Debbie. We're going to bring that back up. Happy birthday, my brother. Go on, break birthday. out the sister testimony, brother Julius. <laughs> put it back up there. Put, 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 it, put it back up there. Put it back up there. <laughs> Debbie G. Washington, that's my girl there. Testimony, five years ago, my twin suffered a massive heart attack. The mm -hmm. hospital called me to come and told me they were going to remove all the machines from him and that there was nothing they could do. Mm -hmm. They said he prepared and expect the worst. Once they removed all the life support machines, he did wake up. The surgeon was called, and I thanked him for performing a successful surgery. I stuck my hand out. He grabbed my hand tightly and said, I did not save your brother. Tears ran down. All How praise to the God of Israel. The God of Israel. He said, I have mercy on whom I will, and I take whom I will. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. Yeah. In Thank Jesus' you. name. Yes. Thank yes, you for sir. that testimony, sister. And Man. see, 
And that's more proof that if you lean on the Lord and you go to him knowing that that's where your trust is, the Lord will heal you, heal you if it's in his will. However, if your robes are clean, if you keep your garments clean and he decides not to heal you, then you can go take your nap in peace and wake up and get your crown. Okay? Thank, you, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. James, that just did something to me. Thank you, my brother. Thank mm -hmm. you. Praise the Lord God of Israel, man. Man. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. So now, brother, you, you, uh, let's pick it up at verse 24. What that say? It says, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people. Let me read that again. And they brought unto him all sick people. Mm -hmm. That were with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, lunatic James, and yes. those had palsy, and he healed them. You know, cerebral palsy, muscular and bone yes. disease, and arthritis, and he healed yes. them, James. He yes. healed them. all of them. So James, all of them, Julius. James, did he did he have to did he have did he have to blow on anybody? <laughs> Did he have to blow on anybody? No Make magic tricks. A, a no wave your hand and make no fall. mirrors. No smoking mirrors. Practical stuff. So now let's move on. Let's go to Matthew chapter nine, brother Julius. Matthew nine. Oh man. Let's stay in Matthew order because this is a this is an important part of this lesson right here. This here go here go one of the the key in, ingredients right here. Matthew chapter nine. Verse 18, Matthew 9 and 18, Brother Julius, go ahead and read it. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped and saying, my daughter is even now, now dead, mm -hmm. but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. And Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples. Go ahead. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Go ahead. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. What did Jesus say, Brother Julius? But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy yes. faith has made thee whole. Thy what? faith. Has made yes, thee whole. Thy yes, faith sir. has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole, James, from that hour. And that, brothers and sisters, is a key ingredient your faith. If How much you faith believe the Lord James? can do it, you go and say, Julius. How much faith do I need? How much faith do I need? It better be holistic, whole faith in, in nothing but God, brother. Because he told you, you better not trust in this man. And I'm telling you, these doctors are practicing medicine. And your prayer should be to the Lord that he guide their hands and get in their minds and tell them what to do, you know, to make that thing right. Because uh, I don't trust them at all. I'm going to tell you that right now. All I got to say, brother, is I'm going to look to the hills from which comes my help. All my help come from the Lord. In, in, in the meantime, though, keep those garments clean so you can go to them like Hezekiah did. When Hezekiah turned to the Lord, he put his works on the table. James. That's, why we read. That's why we read every Sabbath, brother Julius, in that Revelation 22, where the Lord say, you're going to get judged according to your works. And that what Hezekiah put on the table when they told him he was get his house in order, he getting ready to die. He put his works on the table, and the Lord gave that brother 15 more years. You're going to get judged according to your works, so keep your garments clean just in case you have to draw your last breath. Okay, brothers and sisters? But we get ready to get into that, but go ahead, Julius. Israel said that his testimony is so strong that they wouldn't be able to have a dry. He said, My testimony is still too hard for me to tell with a dry face. Mm. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Shout out to shout out to everybody who is listening to this broadcast called James. Yes. He sent forth this word and it healed him. Yes. I know because I was afflicted with the COVID. Brother yes. Booth was afflicted with the COVID, worse mm -hmm. than I was. And I had to cry out to the Lord. 
Yes. Uh, we care for others. Non for profit said, praise the Lord. He healed me from over 20 years of smoking them filthy cigarettes and from a lot of sin sick ways. Man, keeping it 100. Thank you, Jesus. Man, now, thank you guys. Look, look, bro, you let's go to Luke 5 because I'm going to tell y'all before this uh, COVID thing broke out, I had to go up to the St. Louis class and on the way back, uh, I had a stop in Houston at that airport. Then I came on home. But when I got back, I was down sick really bad for about three days, real bad. I have never felt that bad in my life. It, it got so bad, Brother Julius, I'm going into the bathroom uh, every 10 minutes. I just stretched out on that cold floor, and I just cried out to the Lord, man. I, I There was nothing else left for me to do. I just laid out on that cold floor. And my wife came and they said, anything you need me to do? I said, no, because I, I'm, I'm, I, I cried out literally, literally now, Julius, like a little baby. I did to, my, to my Lord, my Lord Jesus. And I cried out to him. It was just that bad. It was bad. And, I, and I'm thinking I probably had a little dose of that COVID before they came out and publicized it to everybody. You hear me? It was Man. bad, brother. But I, Luke 5, my brother. Luke 5, man. brother Julius. Let's go uh, to verse 27. Hold, hold on, on brother. What'd you say? What'd you say? I'm just I'm just listening to your testimony and I'm looking at the comments. Hi, Sharina Israel. You are so right, sister. James, it's it's just I'm getting chills just from this lesson. I'm getting chills from the power and the word of God, man. I, I'm telling you, Dre Doke said, Dre said, Oh Lord, my God, I cried unto thee. And thou hast healed me, Psalm 30 and 2. Thank you, Drake. Yeah. Yes, sir. Putting, Thank you, brother. Keep putting them Thank up, Drake. You, brother Drake. Yes, sir. So now, and we're going to get to that. So let's go Luke 5 and 27, my brother. Luke 5 and 27. What that say? And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with him. Uh huh. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, "Why, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners?" Now, what did Jesus say, brother Julius? And Jesus answering said unto them, "They that are whole need not a physician, mm -hmm. but they that are sick." Jay. There you go. So he said it's the people that sick that need the physician. And he wasn't talking physically sick right there. He was talking. He was trying to do some spiritual healing with those publicans. That's what he was talking about. And that's what we getting ready to get to. But uh, but what say you, brother Julius? Man, I, I'm just I'm, I'm just loving this, brother. I'm loving this. I, I am literally loving this, brother. I thank you. And I thank the Lord for putting this lesson on your mind. Yes, sir. Man. Go ahead and read verse 32. He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yes, sir. And that's what he came to do. And then he, and, and we're going to read later that the master physician had to come and get his uh, physician's assistance back on track, too. OK, but look, so let's go to Psalm 107 real quick. There's a brother. There's a brother from uh, Beaumont, Texas, who's acknowledging you, James. Who, Brother Bell? Brother Thomas, that's the Beaumont family over there, Brother Julius. Yes, sir. I went to their baptism, brother. I was there in Houston. Okay, okay. What are we going, Psalm? Yeah, Psalm 107, brother. Let's pick it up at verse 8. 107 and verse 8. Go ahead and read it. I told you, sisters and brothers, like, share, and post. Psalm 107, you want verse? Verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what, brother? You that's that's a verse we probably should read every morning. Every as morning, as our feet hit the floor because we should be thanking the Lord for every little bitty thing that we take for granted. But can I do it again, down, my brother? Can, huh? I do it again? can I do it again? Go ahead. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for yes. his wonderful works to the children of men. Yes, sir. Now skip on down, brother Julius, to verse 20 and continue. He sent his word and it healed them. What? And delivered, he sent his word, James, and it healed uh -huh. them. 
You see that, brothers and sisters? The word can heal you. Just like somebody you somebody posted up here earlier that the word healed her mind. You you, you remember that? About yes, five sir. minutes ago, somebody posted that up there. So yes, the sir. Lord said he sent his word and it healed them. Go ahead and read. And delivered them from their destructions. Yes. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for mm -hmm. his wonderful works to the children of men. Yes, sir. So now, that's what I'm talking about. But look, Brother Julius, let's go into Malachi chapter 2 real quick. James, can, I, Mal can, go I, ahead, can, I can I make a point here? Yes, sir. Look at this. Look at this verse 22. Mm -hmm. and, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare that with your mouth and declare his works with rejoicing. Yes. But people are blaming God these days. They're mm. mad at God and they're blaming God, James. That's a mistake, brother. I'm I'm sorry. I had to go there, brother. I had to go there. That's I had to go there Let, let's continue. That was just, the Lord just moved me. Where are we going, brother? We going to Malachi chapter 2. Malachi 2. Oh, my goodness. Malachi 2, and we're going to pick it up at that first verse. I'm sorry for taking over your lesson. I'm sorry. No, brother Julius, this is this is how this is how the bomb of Gilead go, brother. Man. This is it. Oh my gosh. Malachi Mal 2 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And now, O ye priests, listen, Israel. Listen. And now, O ye priests, mm -hmm. this command is for you. Yes, sir. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart. To give glory unto my name. Yes. At the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. I will even send a curse upon you. Mm -hmm. I will curse your blessings. Yeah. I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. You and do not lay it to heart. And look, brother Jews, I don't care what city you in. You shouldn't have to drive more than five minutes to find a priest of the Lord, an Israelite, who got a problem with the Lord's name. How you gonna have a problem with the name Jesus, but you don't have a problem with the name Moses, which is an Egyptian name. And you got a problem with the name Jesus, that name came from heaven. The name Ishmael came from heaven. The name John came from heaven. Somebody is woefully uninformed, James. They planned, Julius, because with this book right here, they found out about the Sabbath day. They found out they were Israel. They found out about the feast days. They found out that the Lord is going to set his kingdom on the earth. But then they got a problem with this book when it comes to that name. Everything else is good except that name. Put that back up there. Oh, put that back up there. She, James, listen to this. She keep, she keep Thomas. Good evening, sister. She's from Beaumont, Texas, Brother Julius. How you doing, sister? Testimony. She said, I need this lesson. She said, COVID positive, but God is still gracious because I'm still fine. Oh, nothing but mild symptoms, even in the midst of this affliction, I'm blessed. Yes. Thank Lord God of Israel. Yes. In Jesus' name, thank you for that testimony, sister. Yes, yes, yes. That's what yes. this is all about, James. Yes, that's sir. What, that's what our trials come to make us stronger, sisters and brothers. Yes. Maybe the Lord James put us on our back so that we can look at ourselves, so that we can acknowledge, and so we can make changes, brother. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's it. But let's go to verse 3, brother Julius. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. Now skip down to verse 7 and continue. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They, wait a minute. The priest's lips, that's our lips, brother Julius. They yeah. should keep what? Knowledge. And not yeah. foolishness. Knowledge, brother. That's right. Go ahead and read. And they should seek the law in his mouth. Yes. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Because the priest, you are the assistant to the master physician. You're supposed to go out there and do some healing too. And we're going to read that tonight, brother Julius. Teach, teach James. Teach. Go, go ahead and read. Eight, but you are departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. Mm -hmm. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, said the Lord of hosts. Yes, sir. One more verse. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people according 
as you have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. See, look, Brother Julius, they've been partial in the law, so that means you're going to be partial in your healing, people. You hear what I'm saying? Could you could you say that again? Say you've that, been, Brother You've been partial in keeping the law, so you're going to be partial in healing, people, because you're going to be partial in your knowledge and your understanding. The Lord ain't going to drop, he ain't going to open up your understanding like that if you ain't keeping his law, man. Come on. So now, I, I added another spot to this lesson, brother Jews. I sent it to Sister Maja earlier today, but we're going to go to Jeremiah that 8 chapter, because I had to add this spot right here, my brother. Jeremiah 8, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. You're going to like this one, brother. Jeremiah like, 8, verse like 14. All, huh? I like it all. I like it all, man. I'm I'm trying to calm down. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. I'm trying to calm down. I can't. I can't, James. We see you, Willem and Don. We see you. James, what's <laughs> your Jeremiah, Jeremiah 8 and 14. Now, we just read that the Lord said the, the priest's lips should be full of knowledge, right? But he said they were partial in that law. You hear what I'm saying, brother? Yes. But now, watch this here. Jeremiah 8 and 14. Go ahead and read that. It reads, man, why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there. For the Lord, our God, has put us to silence and given us water of God to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. Why did he do that, Brother Junior? Because we sinned against the Lord, brother. Go ahead and read. We look for peace, but no good came. He said, we look for peace, but no good came. What else did we look for? Go ahead, Brother Julius. And for a time of health, and behold, trouble. But we look for that health. Like a lot of people running scared, looking for it now. Everybody's looking for that health now. He said, but behold, trouble came. Right? That's right, Brother. So now, so skip down, Brother Julius, to, uh, to verse 19 and continue. Go ahead and read. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? So he's asking you the question. Is not the Lord in Zion? Isn't he there? Go ahead and read. It's not her king and her. Don't y'all have a king over there? And then you even got the priest over there too. Go ahead and read. Why have we have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? Go ahead. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. Mm -hmm. And we are not saved. Go ahead and read. For the hurt of the door. I'm, I'm getting emotional, James, because I feel I feel how the Lord feel. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. No. Uh -huh. I reflect astonishment has taken hold on me. One more verse, brother. Is there no bomb in Gilead? That's the question he's asking. He already asked you, isn't the Lord over there with y'all in Israel? Don't it you is. have a king over there? You it got the priest over there? But he said, you should have some bomb in Gilead because you got the priest over there and knowledge should be on their lips. They should not be partial in the law. They should be full in that law. He said, is there no bomb in Gilead? Go ahead and read, Brother Julius. Is there no physician there? Y'all ain't got no priest over there? Huh? Go ahead and read. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Because they have been turned away from the true and living God, Brother Julius. It's supposed to be some bomb over there in Gilead. Willie Diddy says, so there's no blaming anybody but our God. We have to get it right. We have to get it right. Yes, sir. The priest, my brother, the priest do. And yes, the blame sir. is not on God. The blame is with us. Yes. It's by the hand of the Almighty. That's why yes. I don't have no problem with nobody, James. I ain't mad at nobody. I so now, let's go to Matthew 10, and then we got two more spots after that, brother Julius. Matthew what? chapter 10. Oh my Matthew God. 10 and 5. So the Lord said, hey, the priest was partial. They hate his name. And they turned people to many strange idols. Wow. So guess what? It was like there's no bomb in Gilead because they ain't healing nobody. But if you give them this word, like Sister Maya just said, the word is the bomb. Yes, sir. Thank you. you sir. Give it to them. So now, Matthew 10 and verse 5, my brother, go ahead and read it. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them 
saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans into ye not. Uh huh. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus came, the master physician came in the flesh, gathered up some apostles and disciples, jump started them, and then sent them out to go get the rest of the master physician's physician's assistants. Okay. Even a thief, even a thief, even even Judas was one of them who had the same power. Yes, sir. Look at Brother Azza said, I am Israel and I blame me. Yes, sir, Brother Azza. Amen. Yes, sir. We looking in the mirror. Look at the man in the mirror, Israel. So look, so go ahead and read, Brother Julius. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he told them to go out there and preach. The kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. What else did he tell them to do, Brother Julius? Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Go ahead. Cleanse the lepers. Mm -hmm. Raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Cast out devils. Mm -hmm. Freely you have received. Freely give. Yes, sir. So, so the Lord came back. He, he, he authorized and ordained these his assistants to go out and do the things that he came to do. So now let's go to Acts 14 and check out an example of it real quick. Hey, Acts James, 14. Yes, sir. Hey, James, when I go to the doctor, I got to pay a copay and then I get a bill. Yes. Jesus did this for free. And yes, all, all he asked you, <laughs> and all he asked you to do is go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. That's all he asked. All they got to do, Julius, is drink this water and they'll never thirst again, brother. Woo! Woo. Drink that living water. Boy, man, man, I, I, I'm ready for, brother, I'm ready for part four and five. <laughs> hey, well, let's, let's get to this one. Let's go to Acts 14, brother Julius, and let's look at an example of what Jesus told them to go out there and to do that we just read in Matthew 10. Yes. Acts 14 and 8. Go ahead and read it. You want 14 and 8? Yes, sir. And there sat a certain man at Lystra. So now we're talking, this is Paul and Barnabas now. Go ahead and read. Impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Go ahead. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. So now Paul perceived that this man had the faith to be healed because yes. that's a necessary ingredient. Just like Jesus told that lady up here in Matthew chapter 9. He said, your faith has made you whole. Yes. So now Paul perceived that this brother who never walked had the faith to be healed. So what happened, Brother Julius? Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Yes, sir. So so go ahead and read. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in, in, saying in the speech of Lycania, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. You see what, what they did? What they did was God-like because, because the God of Israel, our yes. God, has the power to heal people and he gave it to his assistants to go out there and do the same thing. So uh, while they were out there, their, their mission was to go out and to do some spiritual healing, but they yes. did some physical at the same time they was out there doing some spiritual. But this, okay. is, but this is among the Gentiles. Am I right, James? Yes, sir. This was done among the Gentiles. Yes, sir. I, I, let me read that again. He, they said at the end that the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. Oh my yes. gosh. And they yeah. and they called <laughs> and they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius. We call it Mercury today. But you know what, what dude, we didn't we didn't want to go that far with that, but that's good. That was good, though. But wow. I just wanted to point out that the people liking them to God because what they did, our God can do. We know he can do it. So now let's go to our last spot. First Timothy chapter four. Oh, my gosh. First Timothy four. This is the last spot, brother, you because in all I doing and going out there and trying to heal these people, especially on some spiritual healing of our people, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Go ahead, Brother Julius. 
De uh, uh, Debbie says she's feeling the bomb and his healing in these scriptures tonight. He mm -hmm. can heal us with his words. Powerful yes. medicine. Willa Mae Darden says, she said, I live to know, to chill with him. And Debbie, uh, uh, I mean, it's just a beautiful thing, James. Uh, Coach Chris Taylor said, we couldn't do that. Learning to do it now. All praises to him. Man, Bruce Griffin says, the healer of all healers, give me that bomb. Yes. From the master physician. I'm yes. keeping the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. Saints. That's right, brother, brother Bruce Griffin. That's right, bro. Keep them garments clean, brother, because that's where your safety really lies at, is keeping them garments clean. James, can I make a statement before we before Please we do. Out? Please do. I, I just want to let the people know, it doesn't matter who becomes president. Let me say it again. It does not matter who becomes president of the United States or premier of the world or whatever country. It's not going to stop prophecy. I refuse to get all caught up in emotion in a country of my captivity. I refuse. I understand that we need politicians, but I look to the hills from which come in my health. I look to the hills from which come in my health to keep the roof over my head, to keep his arms around myself and my family, sisters and brothers. No disrespect to nobody, but neither the President elect or the current president know me or you personally. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep the commandments of God in the country of my captivity. I'm gonna keep the laws of the land. And I know, sisters and brothers, that he will be a little sanctuary to me. Enough said, James. Hey, that's right, brother Jews. Because guess what? No matter who get in that White House, when you get that light bill from Calm Ed, guess what? They want that money. They want that money. They want you to pay them. And no matter who's sitting in that house, you got to pay them. And you got to go to Jewels or Walmart or wherever you buy your groceries. You still got to go buy your groceries, man. So and you still got to serve your God. So now we in our last spot, Brother Julius. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Go ahead and read it. Let no man despise thy root, thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. See, this goes back to what Brother Oz was saying. You got to look at yourself, people, brothers and sisters. You got to look at yourself. But go ahead and read, Brother Julius. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to yes. exhortation, to doctrine. Yes, sir. That's the number one thing. And you skip down to verse 15. Go ahead and read it, brother. Meditate upon these things. Again, sisters and brothers, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Not that partially to them, not partially, but what, Julius? But wholly, full of yes. Time, brother. Yes. That thy profiting may appear to all. One more verse. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Why, brother Julius? Why, brother Julius? For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself yes. and them that hear thee. And because it's important that you watch yourself, brothers and sisters, because you can do something that'll make somebody fall off the wagon. So you always got to keep yourself in check, brothers and sisters. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, tonight's lesson was titled, uh, the master physician, and yeah. we want y'all to know that the Lord God of Israel is the final, has the final say so in your health and in your life, brothers and sisters. Depend on him, lean on him, keep your garments clean, keep your faith right, and keep your keep your level of fear in the Lord God where it should be. In Jesus' name, brother Julius. In Jesus' name, brother James. I want to thank you for a most excellent lesson. It was on point and on Praise time. Man. And I pray, sisters and brothers, that somebody was edified tonight and that and that you watch and re-watch and share, make it a watch party and, and continue. We're going to try to, as the Lord give us the strength and the knowledge and the power, sisters and brothers, we're going to try and the health. I pray that y'all keep us all healthy, wealthy, and as wise as we are, sisters and brothers. The most important thing, the important thing like you said, the book said, take heed to sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on in the world, stay with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't lead to your own understanding. 
That's why we're in captivity right now, because we would not listen, James. We would not obey. So sisters and brothers, go back and watch this. I'm going to watch this again tonight because it moved me. So I want to thank everybody who tuned in tonight. And at this time, uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you for being in the chat room. It's almost that time, sisters and brothers. It's this time right here. The Israel of God has the four winds of heaven. This is a book written and produced by the Israel of God. It's available called 1-800-96-BIBLE, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and get your copy of The Four Winds of Heaven. It is a book that, that deals with an analysis of the rapture, saved, and born again. Have your Bible because everything in here comes right out of the Bible. It, come, it is history. It is history past, present, and future pre-told. Get your copy of The Four Winds of Heaven. It will change your life and your understanding. Also, coming up, we are already in the month of November, James, but guess what? It's almost that time. Black history told by the prophets. Five <laughs> weeks of world history, your history, sisters and brothers, and other nations' history as they come in contact with us. So get this uh, for your uh, five DVD Five DVD series, Black History Told by the Prophets of the Bible, and you will be edified. We want to thank you. And if you uh, want some music, call the Israel of God. Order the Israel of God Choir CD. Sisters and brothers, I'm telling you, all the songs are biblically based, and it will help you as you study in the Bible. Play that song as you study in the Bible and meditate upon these things, like my brother brought tonight, Jesus the master physician. James, I want to thank you and please don't be a stranger. Come back and bring up some more bomb, brother. And, and I want to thank you for just, being, just taking the time and you sisters and brothers. We was away from you for two weeks. We hope that there's a difference already and we ask that you continue to watch the bomb of Gilead and pray for one another. Yes. And sisters and brothers, this COVID is still here. Mask up, gown up, cover up, and don't take it for granted and be safe. In the name of Jesus, we wish you well. And we thank you for joining us on another episode. And stay with us uh, next week as we bring another exciting episode of the Bomb of Gilead Bible Radio Show. Until we meet again, again, in the name of Jesus, we bid you peace and good night in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Love you, bro. Oh. Give me my bomb.